recording. I'll go, go in. Welcome everyone here today. We're going to kind of uh, continue with what we were talking about last week. Uh, anybody? Oh, Tim, talk to me about your LP Mama thing that you uh, just shared with me in this new app that you were doing. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Um, I was just playing around. So I've noticed I've been a little bit unorganized when people do call me. So that was helping. And then um, it looks like the COVID restrictions might be coming back. So um, I found this app called Genius Scan. So you can just take any document that's in front of you, take a picture of it, turns it into a PDF, and then you can email it off. So if we're out in the field and you have to get it p form signed last minute or anything you just get it done scan it and email it so you scanned in the uh, lp mama um, page you, you created your own lp mama um kind of like a little checklist with a line on it and stuff and and sabrina that's lp mama was a whole thing you can watch last week's class in regards to kind of helping you ask the right questions and when so are you able to take that pdf and then just kind of utilize that if you're on the road and write on your phone or your tablet or something, or just. I don't know if you, I haven't gotten that far on it. Thanks, Sabrina just popped up, says she uses it all the time. Um, I just did it quickly this morning. I made the Word document, printed it out, and then scanned it and sent it to you just to make sure it was gonna work. Oh yeah, good, thank you, I love that. So yeah, guys, if you guys see any kind of fun thing, Tim's done this a couple of times, that any fun new app that's arrived that we go, wow, check this out, this is this is great, this is something to help us, yeah, please pass that on because those are great and happy to share that with everybody else. So that was called Genius Scan. Was it free or was it cost a little bit of money? Uh, that is free, but like every app you can pay for it to unlock more features, mm -hmm. but just the being able to scan it and email it off is free in it but there's a lot more you can do if you want to pay that i think it's eight bucks good perfect thank you all right so let's talk about that there's a story behind every door um this is so true that you guys i spent when we remodeled this building it was like twenty thirty thousand dollars on remodeling uh, the front lobby and if you haven't been in and down and to see this this building you know there's a lot of times um individuals Oh, if they don't feel like they want to be trapped, I'm not a big fan. You guys, you know, we'll talk about buying cars in a minute, but if you ever, you know, you go buy a car and they put you in this room and they shut the door behind you and I'm just not that type of person. And I had a couple agents go over there and says, why are you spending all this money on this remodel when you could just spend extra money on advertisement? And I said, you'll, you'll, you'll figure it out here shortly. And then both of those agents came to me and says, I totally understand. But we took a front conference room, we got rid of it and made a living room kind of effect in there. And so that, that was more of an opportunity to build and find out and discuss kind of the relationships and building that relationships as Sabrina just shared with you. So I encourage you to, when you go over to a listing presentation, you have a buyer that comes into the office, sit down with them in a, in a safe, controlled environment that you aren't locking them into a room, follow me, let's go into the, to lock yourself into this room and let's go print up some homes or whatever it might be. Um, there's a generally a wife or, you know, a husband or family, kids, dogs, pets that are sitting out in the car when somebody walks in. So you wanna kind of get to know like, are you, are, are you with, are you by yourself? Do you have other individual people with you? And invite them in and just kind of have a nice conversation of, where they're they're coming from and this is kind of important uh, to and we're going to discuss this on the psychology of where these individual people are coming from and where they're going uh, the last couple of presentations i this week that i've gone on listing presentations i sit down and i'm asking questions like what brought you to Penn Valley? What brought you to Alta Sierra? What brought you to this area and i want to know kind of starting back there of kind of like kind of what what their scenario is, what they liked about that. So I might say, hey, Jaina, you know, thanks for inviting me over. What what interest do you why'd you buy this house? You know, what 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 drew you to, to to this home? And I'm gonna kind of share a little bit more in detail of this because you're kind of building and you want to understand the emotions of things. And I had a client that told me he sold over or bought bought and sold over 20 houses. I and they still live in Auburn here and they still keep in communication with them. They came into my office. We sat there in a in the living room, kind of what I call the living room with couches and a TV and a coffee table and just kind of really nice little little area. And we just chatted and we chatted for like 10 minutes about just kind of I took notes. I, I asked. So Jana, Sabrina, everybody just 
if you ever, you know, I, I always ask when I'm in a listening presentation, do you mind if I take notes? Because you don't want them going, what's he writing about my house? <laughs> and so I always like to ask, do you mind if I take notes? And, and he just said to me, he says, Eric, I just want you to know, this is after, maybe halfway in the transaction. I just want you to know that we bought 20, over 20 houses. And I just want you to know that you were the first person that really sat down with us and started asking us questions about our life and where we wanted to go and where we came from. And he said, I just want you to know that was, that was the best I've ever seen. You know, I, I, I just wanted to give you kudos on that. And that's because too often times we're just such in a rush of just rushing out the door and go show them a home or go meet them at a house. We have to take the time to kind of understand what they're kind of looking for, what their emotions are. Uh, yesterday, I went to a consultation um, in which I call it a consultation. I tell the people and she even told me then too, she said, Eric, I just want you to know because you said this on the phone that you're not, that you're in control. I had two people this week, the one we listed yesterday, she, when I signed the paperwork, even though we've been there over to her house the last maybe a month and a half. She said, Eric, when you told me that I was in complete control and do not rush it, I want you to know that that is what made me go with you because I didn't feel like I, you were, you, I felt you were going to be the agent for me that no one was rushing or pushing me into selling and buying, you know, my, my next home. So it's just understanding that and make sure when you guys are doing this consultation, when I did yesterday, I said to her, I said, here's your three choices. You're moving to Denver. You're moving to, um, you know, Sun City to here local. They got two daughters on both sides. I gave them some ideas about buying two small condos, buying a motorhome, going back and forth. And then I also said this, which is really important. I said, what about the option of just staying here? Now, is that a normal salesperson that somebody's going to say that's going into a listing presentation who's going to say, what about maybe the option of staying here? And they thought, really haven't thought about that one. And then we went over the scenarios of what that is. And they were so grateful of, of that because I wasn't just trying to get the commission and push them out. I want to build that relationship, understand what the story is, how we can actually best unfold that to make a, the best decision that we can do. Uh, this week, uh, I got a call from a uh, um, Auburn Greens lady that I went to two years ago about, and I don't, was that this week or last week? I don't know if I shared that. It was within the last seven days or so. And I just, and she called me back, goes, Eric, this is, you know, me again. And I said, thanks so much for reaching back out. And it was that two years ago, we went to this listing presentation that she's moving away. And, and you just, I, you know, I just said, guys, you're in control. When you're ready to move, let's move. And so, you know, it's, it's not a rush, but the key is there consistency of staying in touch with them. Because I also reached out to uh, somebody this week to look, bef you know, before I reached out to them, I looked to see if they actually had it, um, you know, had listed it and they had listed it already. So then I kicked myself because I didn't stay in touch with that person enough to be able to get that listing. So find out what the story is because uh, there's current satisfaction of what's going to end up happening is that there's two things here on satisfaction. You want to know what, how satisfied they're on their home. Who's actually sold a house? Anybody has actually sold a house and, and left? And, you know, I've been in mine for 26 years, so I haven't really sold my primary residence. Anybody sell their primary residence before? Yeah. A bunch of times, yes. A bunch of times. So, Jana, what was the reason? Were you dissatisfied with your home? What happened? Uh, no, actually, we were when we were in the Bay Area, we flipped houses. So we only lived in the house about two years. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so it was more of a business for us. But now I'm kind of in my dream home. And yet I kind of go, hmm, I wonder what else is out there. <laughs> anybody, anybody else sell their primary residence? Yeah, me a couple of years ago. Was there a reason why? Did you just lose satisfaction? Did you, what, what was? It was a quality of life decision. Uh -huh. So we're going to go to future promise here in just a minute for the future promise of actually an additional um, uh, you know, home or something that's better or, or bigger or downsizing for something smaller like the people yesterday, they, they're, it's too big for them. So, you know, we need to find out where they're at with their satisfaction rate. You know, are they one to 10? Because this isn't something that uh, just jolts up that boom, instantly. Now it could be if there's a job transfer, but that's not really the dissatisfaction is what happens over time is that sellers get to the point or individuals get to a point where they're, maybe the dog is barking next door. And that's just a little like, oh, that's just dog just freaks me out. Or maybe they're in an HOA and they go, I just got another ticket. Or now I just got cited by something else that they just told me I got cited. Now I left my trash can out too long. Now I've got, you know, it's like it, the things that start kind of 
creeps up that you might get a little bit annoyed about living or neighborhood or, you know, whatever it might be that you got to kind of find out where they're at with that. So kind of find out that story. And then they might, sometimes people will go, well, I don't really want to share with you all my dissatisfactions because like, I don't want to share with you that there's like a, you know, some crazy person that's next door, which we shared with that guys about that lady that had some person outside being on her bushes and all sorts of things, which she's, by the way, has never listed her condo, but, um, so things that might creep up. So you want to kind of know what that is. So let's talk about cars. This lovely Tesla here. How many people have bought a car in the last couple of years? Anybody? Because you bought a car. So why'd you, why, you know, yep. Tim, why'd you buy a new car? Needed it. Needed it? Anybody else? I, I, I run cars into the ground. So it okay. was time. It was time, so put too many miles, needed a little bit newer to car. Yeah, and so actually we bought it for our dog at the time. Oh, for our our dog. elderly dog, we needed to get a smaller car so we can get in and out. Oh, okay, I like that. You know, you're like, I like those little beds that you have these little 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 steps up on tall beds for the little puppies and stuff. Yeah, and so it's good, so you did it for, for the dog. That's an expensive move, so that's good. So, um, you know, but so nobody really moves to something until they are moving from something. So I say that with the cars of thinking about what car you're driving, what what you got, what you need. And it's like, you know, my, my car's got lots of miles. So my new car is probably going to be here in the next couple of days. Um, so it's about I'm moving away from my car, even though I love my car, but it's like, you know, it's got 170,000 miles on it. And I just don't want to be stuck somewhere when it all of a sudden just breaks down. So, you know, you want to move. So some emotion, you guys, we're trying to find out the emotions of what's kind of transpiring in the people's heads. Um, I asked some really tough questions. I mean, I asked, you know, yesterday I says, well, which daughter you would you like to move? You know, which one you get along with? Would you think if you stayed in their house for uh, a month, would you think you would be, you know, over, you know, how was your welcome there? Would you, would, the, would she kick you out? Could you handle that? So I'm kind of sharing and talking about like, who do you like better? So, you know, and kind of asking these hard questions, like it's kind of, um, you know, tough when you say, well, do you owe anything on your property? And I know they've been there for 26 years and they still owe 200 some thousand dollars on there. So me, I'm kind of cal calculating, okay, they should have already had this paid off. They're like 75 years old, you know? So when they even asked me, should we even buy another home? Cause you know, if they're not, do they even give loans to people who are 30 years, 30 years uh, or 30 year mortgages of people who are 75 years old. So then you share personal stories about a 94 year old man, a buyer that we sold the house to and sure enough, he got a loan. So we're kind of going, oops, click. So you want to get, uh, which we were talking about that, Tim, about your future promise and your emotions. And so, uh, guys, this is so important that you want to them to see, you know, it's the perspective psychology of letting people and seeing people and their yard playing, seeing people in their home, seeing people cooking in their kitchen. So if they're, if I'm interviewing and discussing and taking all these things in, and they're telling me that they're, they want a yard for their kids and they want, you know, a, a, you know, a beautiful gourmet kitchen and stuff. And I know that the person that I'm taking a lot of this from that I'm, we're hoping to get him up and up at the summit, but uh, he's a, a, you know, a gentleman that shared this information recently. And he basically said that uh, when he bought his home, the agent said, guys, I want you to walk through this house, but I don't, you really want you to look at it because the house needs a lot of work, but I'm going to take you straight to the backyard because that's where you guys that's what you guys want. That's what you guys have expressed to. And so now they, the buyer's kind of walking through going, I can't really peek here, but I want to see the home. And yes, they had wallpaper and all sorts of crazy things all over the place. But he went out to the backyard and they sat there and he sat those people in the backyard and said, why don't you guys just go ahead and take a seat here in, the, in these chairs and I'm going to go return a text or a call and I'll be right with you. And so what he did is he actually set them in there so they could see this perspective, this future promise of them sitting out in their backyard and getting a feel of like, this is what I want. This is the view that I want. This is the backyard. This is a gourmet kitchen that I want. This is the amazing, you know, whatever master bathroom soaking tub. You know, I have a buyer who says she will not buy a house unless she has a soaking tub. So when we're going through the homes, I go, here's that soaking tub. So I'm, I'm letting her picture her emotions in, you know, her, her bathroom or in her kitchen or something. So just find the emotions and then work with those, those, those emotions to be able to help these individual people um, 
you know, see it, feel it. Uh, you know, I, I really feel that there are some videos that we've done. I've actually gone and out and, and had my grandbabies and my son and my daughter and son-in-law, and I had them come down to a video shoot uh, down in Auburn. And I had them kind of going through, I shot a couple of videos of him driving up in his car and then another sh shot of a video of, of him running to the, or walking to the front door and his kids coming out, running towards him and hugging him. I shot videos of my daughter, you know, in the beautiful kitchen, you know, serving food to her children at the bar. I had them run in the backyard and run by the pool. So I'm showing this emotions of like, guys, this is what it, this is what this house looks like. This is what it feels like to be able to live into this home. So you want to paint this picture of like get their emotions so they enjoy, kind of enjoy that and be able to have these future memories in here uh, on that. So, you know, like I, uh, no, Paula, Paula's coming in. So like where, you know, like how many people in the last, uh, this last couple of weeks where it says, you know, hey, where do you want to eat? You know, where do you guys want to eat? Do you guys have that conversation with somebody that you guys were going out to eat? And what did you guys, what did you guys do? It says nothing sounds good. You know, it's not that nothing sounded good. It's just nothing felt good. And so you want to have these people feel good about it. Um, how many people have working with a buyer or seller that are super, that have super anxiety? Anybody have an anxiety filled client that you guys are struggling with? I know that uh, Sarah probably can't talk because I think she's getting kids in there but I know Sarah's last transaction she um you know she had a lady that was hanging hanging on a on a on a on a thread of like do I continue moving forward or do I not continue moving forward um and those are individual people that you have to double down your 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 communication with them you know, I know that uh, Sabrina and I think Paul is in here too, sold many houses. And basically what happens is that sometimes you could sell a house and you might talk to the person maybe once a week and that's probably good. And other people, you got to talk to them on a daily basis. And so you got to find out where their emotions are, where their stress level is. And I keep, I've told so many people today or this, this week that guys, I'm, I'm here. I want to take your stress. I'm taking your stress. Let me take your stress. Here's a checklist. This is all I want you to worry about right now. And we're going to take one step at a time, one day at a time, and let me guide the ship going through this difficult process, but I don't want it to be difficult on you. And yes, I know it's stressful. Yes, I know, but I want you just to start packing these little cupboards right here. And then you finish packing those and you get back to me and let me know. And so it's, you just kind of want to you know help them and guide them because there's going to be times, Tim, that you're going to be selling houses to a single person. Just closed two houses that were two women um, on two different homes that just lost their husbands a year ago. And now they're going through this emotions of selling their home uh, with by themselves, packing by themselves. Um, you know, just all this emotions about this is the house that they lived in for 20 years with their husband and, and one of them, they built the house together. So these are emotions that you want to like, just understand and you want to feel that. And here's a key word that I want to, to share with you. I, you know, I've lost some relatives. Yes. Um, but I haven't survived cancer. I haven't, you know, done different things that, that other people that are stressed in their lives. So when you just, when you say, oh, you know, I know how you feel. So if Ali comes to me and says, hey, you know, I, I just survived cancer. And I go, I know how you feel. I can't say that. I don't know how Ali felt. I don't know how that she felt on the, uh, I've never gone through that experience. So, but if, if somebody comes and says, I've lost my father recently, then I can share that and say, I've lost my father recently. But um, you, here's the key word I want you to memorize is that it's basically this, I can only imagine. Allie, I can only imagine the toughness that you just went through on fighting cancer. And guys, Allie didn't fight cancer. I'm just using that as an example. Maybe. I didn't. Okay, thank you, Allie. <laughs> so I'm just saying that that you're just sharing, just sharing, um, just, just saying, guys, I can only imagine how you feel about that. So what that just did is that just helped Allie understand that I'm feeling for her. And it was just the nice words to be able to use in the correct words to use at that correct time um, to be able to relate and see that emotions. Oops. All right. So uh, so what, guys, we have that. We've got um, both both your, your emotions, your future promise, uh, and your dissatisfaction. So if those two things, if pe people are thinking, I think there's something better for me, and I'm really dissatisfied with my home right now, what 
you know, they're the inhabitants of the challenges that are ahead. Um, you know, I don't know, you know, what's, what's the highest interest rate you guys have ever had? Anybody ever have a loan that's been higher than 5%, 6%? Anybody? Seven percent? Who's got the highest? Because my my house I bought in nineteen ninety five was nine point five percent. You know, and that people think of that and go, "Wow, that's crazy." So the challenges of inhabitants of people they understand, and basically it's fear. You know, it's it's uh, emotions and cost and fear. Um, people are fear fear of uh, uh is it you you know, do you guys feel that it's 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 an easy market right now to buy a house? Is easy or hard right now to buy a house? Hard. It's hard. So do you think that some of your buyers are having emotions of, of you know, fear, fear and the cost of buying a home, the fear of moving, the fear of, uh, of interest rates? And that's why I shared that with you a little bit to say, guys, you know, here's, you know, they moved just a little bit, you know, in the last little while, but that's still huge amount, you know, compared to what they used to be. And those who bought homes, maybe I don't think any of us had, but back in a, 1970, 1980s, 81, 82, they were um, like 19%. Can you imagine taking your, you know, Tim, you can get your little calculator out and kind of look at it and go, put your interest rate you have probably now around the threes and then put 19% and see what happens to your payment. <laughs> it would be, it would be scary. And so, you know, that's kind of where it's at. So we need to actually work on the fears and find out in the emotions. So you're selling someone's home, you're buying someone's home, you know, helping somebody buy a home. What are your fears? And so when you have that buyer consultation, you sit down and say, great. So ask them straight up. So what, you know, what, what are, what are your concerns? Maybe you don't call them fears. Maybe you call them what concerns do you have about buying a home in today's market? And they're going to open up and you just, there's too many of us that actually like to spill and start speaking and going to the next question too quickly. You notice sometimes I'll pause when I ask a question waiting for some kind of response from you guys to allow people the emotions and be able to think about that. So, you know, kind of sitting down with somebody and asking a buyer and say, Jana, thanks so much for coming in and meeting with me today. I'm so excited. This is sounds from our pre pre phone conversation that you mentioned that you were this is the first time home buyer kind of experience. So I want to share with you. I printed some things out for you that I wanted to hand to you that are for home, first time home buyers because I know it's just all this emotions and all these moving parts and stuff and like all overwhelming, like, what do I do? Um, yesterday's sales presentation was that these guys are like, like I said, 75, but they feel like they, they haven't sold a house forever and ever and ever. So this is new to them. Um, I signed a listing presentation the other day and this is her first home that she's really ever sold because, you know, I, I don't know, I didn't really get into really her life, but, you know, sometimes you got to, I think I've shared that with you is that you got to ask, you know, is this your first time, second time, third time, are you experienced? But whatever it is, never take it for granted that they, you feel that they should know what, what we know. And so find out that emotions and say, you know, what type of emotions, what type of cost are they going to talk about cost and fear time. Um, I've got somebody who is, um, you know, telling me that, hey, I've got, I'm getting evicted. I'm not evicted, but I'm getting moved out of my house because I'm, I've been a renter there for three years. And now my house, my landlord just came to me and said, they gave me a, a 60 day notice and I got to find a place to live. You know, that's stressful. That's crazy. That's like, you know, you know, the cost of moving, the cost, you know, people feel like they still have to do 20% down. So guys, this week you should post something and get, get a hold of your lender and post some kind of fun, fun thing out there that, hey guys, you, you know, I just closed a deal or this deal could close for 5% down or, you know, that's only $5,000 or there's monies. I put out a post the other day that there's monies for Nevada County, you know, has, you know, some funds. And I talked to a, a, a buyer about that directly because they said they were a little short on funds and there's ways that you can get around that by having seller give credits and things. I just did a $10,000 credit on a, on closing costs for um for a home that we just did. And that was a little tricky, guys. By the way, we did that just as a pro note here. We wrote that on two different offers and it was a little kind of, you know, it doesn't make us look super strong asking for extra money, but she only wanted extra money to, to help with the house, not really with the down payment. So make sure that agent knows. We didn't get both of those offers. So this last time we went ahead and didn't put the $10,000 in 
got the house accepted, knowing that they just fell out of escrow, that they were in a higher price before. And then after we got it accepted, I went back and I talked to the agent one-on-one -on -one and said, hey, do you mind if we actually add 10,000? This is the day we got it in contract or the day after. Do you mind if we add $10,000 to the contract? Because she would like to put a carport outside or have some monies towards that carport. And she goes, yeah, my guy's pretty easy. The no, no worries, here we go. So that's what we kind of did. And be able, and then we just changed the contract and gave it back to the, to, to the lender. So things like that, that you can do that we can kind of work. So emotions, fear, you know, of like, how am I going to do this? We just need to kind of find out where they're at and help them on that. So guys, here's the formula on the last slide here is people buy or sell when they're, when their current dissatisfaction doo -doo -doo, multiplied by their future promise is greater than the cost and fear. So we have to really, we are, you know, we are people that, that are, you know, you guys have pretend licenses, I guess. We have our real estate license, but you guys are marriage counselors. You guys are psychologists. You guys, I mean, you, you, you just have to use all this stuff to be able to kind of get deep and dive into it. Just know a little bit. I wouldn't go into a lot about financial stuff and their loans and their, you know, tax laws and stuff, but just know a little bit. Somebody the other day asked me about the tax laws and said, hey, Eric, you know, you shared that with me before. Can you get me some information on that? And I said, absolutely. Let me find some articles and I'll send that to you. But also please remember to talk to your tax person because they're the ones that you really need to share, share and talk to. So I only knew just a little bit to get to that next level to be able to give them a direction about saving maybe some of their taxes or saving some things of that nature. So Guys, it is um, you know, our job to help you know, clients manage their fear and help them see their future, help them see themselves in a new home or see themselves moving to Tennessee or because that's where most of my sellers have been going to recently. So um, thoughts on that, guys? Any, um, any thoughts or any stories that you guys have um, in regards to that? No? All right, so I, I would just chime in that um, meeting their needs um, with, like you said, counseling and, and emotional support is is so incredibly um, critical and necessary. And uh, really, it's it's a gift to be able to be in the trenches with your clients and um, and have them trust you. And uh, also, like you said, use those service providers or the other professionals around to um, to help provide the absolute you know need um, beyond real estate, and um, I think that just gives uh, weight to our abilities to care for them in as many aspects as we possibly can. I love that, Sabrina. That's basically just having those phone numbers of you those locations, those people, those connections, share that you have those connections. And then they just feel it just makes them feel so much better. I mean, we've had Sammy's friends come to two houses recently and take things out. And so when I was yesterday, what am I going to do with all my stuff is what this lady says. And I said, you know what, we have Sammy's friends, we have this other company, and it just immediately took her fear of the cost and her fear of everything and just brought it way down. And now she, she felt now relieved that there was an out, there was a door that we could help her out. So Sabrina, thank you for, for sharing that because it is. So you guys, and I would put those people in your phone because you're going to be sitting there at a presentation and they'll say, hey, do you have Sammy's friend's number? Now, yeah, we could Google it or whatever, but it's just easy, nice to have all those on there. So, you know, in the, or I'll say, you know what, to this lady yesterday, I said, let me, email you uh, all these individuals. So I said, it was nice to meet with you. And I just gave her all my contact people's information, say, boom, 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 here it is. A plug for something coming from Select and Cornerstone is that there is this vendor list slash, um, I don't know, you guys know what that's called. There's something coming down the pike that's like a, a an app or a computer software system to allow the, to communicate with your client and give them the, this information. And it's supposed to be on Siri and all this stuff that you can just say, hey, give me a painter. And it kind of is connected to our, our, our database. So make sure if you guys have good contractors or people that you want to recommend, make sure that you get them in and on those lists. So that would be great. So, all right, I've got chat, but I think that was just uh, the genius thing. Yep. Uh, all right. All right, it's so gorgeous. Best front lobby of C21s in the air. Oh, that's good. Thank you, Sarah. I appreciate that. Shannon did it. And that's actually Shannon did all my 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 whole office in here too. So, 
All right, so uh, any, um, any other questions in regards to emotions or working with or stories, I can pause recording too and, and we can go.